So now moving on to step eight, um, like I said previously in the step six tutorial, this one we're gonna reuse that code, except this time we're gonna set it up so it's in its own separate function. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do is probably get this somewhere where we can even still have access to it. Um, let's go ahead and add a new script. This one I'm gonna want. We're gonna end up putting this in the Lua engine or the um, cheat table Lua script. So we'll want to make sure we're just using Lua syntax. But basically, the main thing we need is um, this stuff here. This is where that check and that auto deallocate, just because we won't necessarily be doing that all the time. highlighting um, we can go ahead and get rid of that because that'll be in our actual assembly script um, or auto assembler script and then basically we just need to wrap this in a function and then let's call this um, get off code address you can name it whatever name you want. That's actually kind of a goofy name to name it, but it's going to work. Um, so then here, what we can go ahead and do is basically just get rid of some of these parameters. Um, we'll actually likely just go ahead and reuse them. Um, so we want... I'm actually going to say just because we want to always give it an offset or always give it an index, we'll go ahead and make the offset first because that will always be necessary and then make the um, index optional. So the way we're going to do this now, we'll just do AOB string local equals our AOB string parameter and then index local equals our index parameter or zero um, and then our offset is going to be kind of the same thing and this way we can even still make it off you know um, optional instruction offset or zero just in case you do the AOB and you don't actually need to supply that offset um, and so this pretty much has you know the function completed again we could go ahead and throw in some checks so say if if type will be string is not equal um, string and then we throw an error and say it will be string actually let's make that quoting something here huh must be a string and then a statement um, and we could do that on all the way down uh, really probably wouldn't want to throw an error since we're giving it a default value but maybe up here before we set it just use the uh, the index parameter. Um, some languages won't let you use the same name, but Lua really won't care. It'll kind of understand this. Um, but that's where if we wanted to, we could actually set it up to where so our AOB, well that's not going to work because it's going to find that first one. Um, so our AOB string, we can even um, start it off with an ARG for argument. And do the same thing here. And then again, this is just making it a little more explicit. So this way we can easily tell the difference between the two. Actually, let's go ahead and fix that. Um, if you are 
are using Sublime Text and wondering how I'm doing that. Basically, it's Control D. We'll select all instances of a word automatically. But that should get us what we're looking for here to where we can just call this. So now all we really need to do is go ahead and start off with popping this into the cheat table um, Lewis script. Basically, at this point, all we really need is just that. We don't really need a whole lot else. Um, to make sure it's actually going to show up, what we want to do, yeah, let's go ahead and save. Let's save back up first. And so we don't lose track of stuff and do like I did and delete stuff and not get it back without having to redo it. Um, we want to actually make sure we execute this. Now obviously because it's just a function and we're not really doing anything, it's not actually doing much, all it's doing is setting this function so that way when we use it later we'll be able to get access to it. And of course if we make changes to it we need to re-execute to reset the function properly. Um, once you've got it in here, we can go ahead and close that out. And then at that point, yeah, we're gonna actually gonna find our value now. So let's go ahead and go and find our value. Find out what access is it. Change value. Stop that. Um, so this is the one where we actually got to do some backtracing to find our base and see where it's coming from. As we can see, ESI keeps getting used, so it's likely still the same. Or RSI. I keep saying that wrong. Um, so this looks like this is the start of our function. We can kind of do just like we did the other time break and trace. We will want to step through everything. Um, again, we don't actually need all this. I want to say 400 should probably do it. And sometimes that's just a guessing game if it doesn't get us far enough down. So... Yeah, so that's our instruction that we need to read to. Um, again, it's going to show everything different because it does see it as being changed. But once we do that, we can kind of see RSI staying the same here. So our first offset is zero. Let's go ahead and keep track of that. Um, actually, our first offset or our final offset is one A and then zero. Got another one eight. And basically from here, um, to explain this a little bit better, so if, if we actually saw while setting RSI here, which gets used further down, and that's you know our base here. But if this was say RCX, then when we scrolled up from here, we'd have to start watching RCX and not RSI. Um, but that would only be in this part of the instruction here, um, the actual address it's using, but it keeps using RSI, so it's making it real easy, so we can just keep watching that value and see as it changes. So again, we've got another offset of one zero. And then that looks like that's the end of it, so that's going to be our offset list. We can go ahead and double check this. Copy that. And this will basically be our pointer for the most part. Uh, again, I'm going to pop this over somewhere where I can see it while I'm building this. So we want a pointer. Let's go ahead and give it a name. Step 8 value, and then it was 4 offsets, so our 
first offset is at one zero, then one eight, then zero, then one eight again, and as we can see here, it's pointing to our the correct address. So now, from here, what we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to set up our script to read from this point and grab this address, just kind of like we did before. And again, it's going to read these four bytes, and then after that, be at this instruction and read, you know, grab that address, and then add those to the four bytes plus this address, and that'll be this same number here. Or no, not that same number. It'll be. this same number, our base address. So again, let's go ahead and um, I don't think I have a script. Oh, yeah, we didn't open one yet. So what we can do here is go ahead and get our auto assembler script opened. Um, this one we do want the cheat table framework again. Let me throw this in a text editor over choosing. Yeah, we don't need that. We'll go ahead and tell it we're using Lua again. And then this one we only need to be down in the instruction address and all we need to do is call that get code address. Now, like we've set it up, we want our AOB string, then our offset. Again, it doesn't have to be hex, but I just like to be explicit. And then this is where we could supply that index if we needed to, if it wasn't zero, but uh, we'll leave it with the default zero and we'll just make sure we refine our AOB well enough. It shouldn't be too difficult in this game. Um, just be in the tutorial. Control Alt Copy or Control Alt C. C again. Control Alt C, Control Paste. Um, so again, we want to wildcard these. And that's kind of the main reason why I like packing it, because it makes selecting it a little easier, but if that looks too jarring or just too messed up to you, don't do it. Because um, I feel like, yeah, when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's more for you and just do whatever makes you feel good. <laughs> but uh, so that's good. Let's go ahead and that actually should be. Oh, I'm actually screwing up here. We need a modifier function. I didn't put that in in the first place. Um, so we still got our function here. Let's make sure we actually add our um, symbol. So let's go argument symbol. And let's, we can just copy this directly to some extent. Make sure we check that our symbol is an actual string. Oh, I didn't change that. Let's update our argument thing there. So that way we know what's going on a little better. Um, anyway, there we go. So this should be right. And then we just need to make sure we replace this with our argument symbol. And so that way it will be whatever symbol we set. Again, we want to go ahead and pop this into the Lua script, execute, so it updates. And this should be all that we need. Close that window out. Let's go ahead and open a new one. Oh, it looks like maybe it's still there somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's 
we got to put in our syntax check. Okay. So this should function the way we want it to. And actually, I don't know, I won't. We got to put in our pointer symbol. Um, so, PTR step eight. Okay, now we should actually be good. Sorry, I'm getting a little mixed up here. Um, going a little too fast, I think. And then there we can see that we're actually, it is executing properly. We're getting the symbol registered properly. And basically any instance of that address is going to be updated to this. Um, and then as we can see there, we're not actually unregistering it properly. But what we can do is either use um, Lua again and just uh, unregister symbol. Or in this case, let's go ahead and jump back into assembler because the um, enable and disable sections will be run separately, more or less. So when we enable that and then we disable it, we can see it actually unregisters the symbol for us and then we can still enable it because we have our check properly. Um, it's not coming up with an error for not having the symbol when we try to unregister it. Um, so that's pretty basic for this one. So at this point we just need to make sure we go ahead and put in our address based on this. So again, we're going to want to make it a pointer. So I'm going to give this a value. And then add our four offsets in. So one zero, one eight, zero, and one eight. And then like we can see here, they're all pointing to the same thing now. that's pretty much it for step eight we'll go ahead and go a little farther with this what we're going to want to do is let's say we want to go ahead and set this up so we don't have to do it in Lua. we can do it directly in the cheat engine auto assembler let's go and grab the updated version of this as well so we'll goof that up again So to do that, what we need to do is we actually need to tell the auto assembler we got a new command. We'll have to do some some different stuff to make that work. Um, basically, there's a register auto assembler command. Um, you can find that in the cheat engine lua.txt file or on the wiki. I do believe I have it updated there. Um, so to keep this video from being an hour long, we're going to kind of step through this part a little quick. Um, let's go ahead and rename this Lua. And then AA for Auto Assembler. Um, so we're going to want to add some key stuff. I'm kind of gone ahead and got that in here. Um, so this is our get opcode address that we already, the function we already wrote. Then we're going to the main things we're going to need to add is this split function and then actually make a, a Lua function that uh, it can be passed to for the register auto assembler command and then this way we can split the parameters and then use our syntax check to make sure we exit out when we don't need to do the AOB scan um, this way we can still check parameters and all of that so the split function basically it takes a string and a delimiter see it being used here um, and it, the main thing you need to understand is that what it's going to do is it's going to split that string based on whatever delimiter we feed it and then it's going to remove the delimiter as it goes along and then each 
match will just be the individual parameters. Um, so when I write these auto assembler commands like this, I always like to make sure I put a little comment up here to to know what I want my arguments to be and all that. Because sometimes looking at all this, it can be a little difficult to figure out what's actually going on. Whereas this, we can see at a glance, we're looking for a symbol, an AOB string, an offset, and an index. Um, So, with this one, what's going on is, um, first we're just setting a dummy variable just because I, I think it stands out a little bit better in this way. I explicitly know I'm wanting an empty string here um, to an empty string. And basically that's so when we do our split, we get a table back of all the parameters split by, con you know, by a comma. And then we go through that table, so the first instance, or the first parameter, we're just g subbing out or you know replacing uh, any sp spaces within that with an empty string so this way if they do symbol and space and then common space and we're, we're not it's not going to mess us up um, otherwise without doing that you'd have to make sure it was packed in a very specific way um, we could add some more in there to make sure we you know it's really robust and say get rid of um, any of the uh, quotes or something like that in case they actually do keep using strings like from the Lua but we're gonna set it up so it's like an auto assembler command and it, it doesn't take strings in the same way Lua does um, but then here we're kind of doing the same thing AOB we're just getting rid of all the spaces in it and then our offset we're just leaving that as this for the for now at least because uh, it could be nil because it's uh, you know we're making it an optional so basically, and if the offset isn't nil, then that's where our offset string, we go ahead and get rid of that. And then in case they do like I do and like them to use a lot of 0x to make it explicitly hex, um, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then we convert it to a, a base 16 number because my, my thinking is it's either always just it should always be hex because it's an auto assembler. Um, if not, if, it's, if it is nil, then we're just going to go and give it a value of zero. And we kind of basically do the same thing with index. Um, and as you can see, oh, I did mess that up. Yeah, so that needs to be a four there because I uh, copied this from something else. I had another parameter in there for the, the protection flags, but we'd have to modify this to actually pass all that and deal with all that. We're not going to do that here. Um, hopefully it'd be straightforward enough where from this you'd be able to grab your string, pass it to this, and then again give you another argument and pass it to this and just make sure you put it in here at your um, AOB scan. Uh, can't even see the spot. Here we go. So yeah, if you put that parameter in there then it'd be, you could do that as well. We don't really need that in this case. Um, but again from here, so after we've got all of our parameter set up and we want to go ahead and check them and here I'm just checking for nil not even seeing if it's a string just because it kind of always will be a string no matter what anyway um, then we just tell it that you know wrong number of parameters no symbol was given um, for this one to really throw it have to be no parameters were given whatsoever and then same thing with AOB we tell you know wrong number of parameters no AOB was given and then uh, we do kind of want to make sure we explicitly state that it's an AA command, so this way we're not looking at the this one here, thinking we've messed something up, and we know it's it's happening in this one. And then the only other thing after that is after we've done all that, we want to do our if syntax check return. So this way we don't actually call this, and this will just kind of go through the function and make sure that all the parameters being passed are correct and everything's right for the syntax check and then when we're not doing a syntax check and we're actually executing then we'll actually pass all that to get opcode address. Um, the other option would be make this instead of it registering the symbol just make it return that base address and then that way here again you could return that base address and then there you would want to do something like a um, return a string 
where you just you know use a define or something like that or a, uh, set the label properly or something um, we're just going to go ahead and leave it kind of simple in this case and make it to where it will always register a symbol no matter what so next what we're going to want to do is go and copy all this pop it into our Lua table here um, or our Lua script before we execute it though let's go ahead and actually modify this and this way we can kind of see something that's going to happen here switching back and forth um, one thing we are going to want to change because we're not actually wanting them we didn't make sure to pull these out we need to actually make sure we get rid of these um, again we can leave it this way or we can just go with that and know that it's going to be hex by default um, we'll go ahead and leave it that way for now um, and then here down here we'll actually unregister our symbol so again we can see we're not getting any syntax highlighting with our function but what's going to happen is this cheat engine will use any of the registered auto assembler commands so this way when we execute that now it recognizes that as a function um, and this should have us ready to where we can go ahead and you know, I ended up having to relaunch so let's see what Accesses this. That's not what I want to do. Show this assembly. Okay. Um, so come on back here to the top. Yeah. So we disable that. And that's our Lua function actually doing it now. If we go ahead and enable this, we can see with just pure a, you know, auto assembler, we're able to do the same thing. Um, again, I'm sorry for not really stepping through this and writing it all down, but I, I think this video would have wound up being an hour or more long to really go through every bit of this. Um, but you've already got the base Lua function here that we're using to do most of the work and then the main thing you're going to need to do is copy this to get all that working pull that back out so we can see everything um, but that's kind of it for this step we'll move on to step nine and i guess actually we ought to probably double check and make sure it's actually working correctly i think that would have worked either way over 5,000. So change pointer. And that does in fact work. So so that's it for that one. Um, we'll go and go on to step nine.